scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. We have that projected. 2 Timothy chapter 3. The Bible says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Please, let's have our attention together now. The Bible says, and is profitable. He's talking about scripture now. That scripture is profitable for doctrine, number one. Number two, for reproof. Number three, for correction. Number four, for instruction in righteousness. Why? Verse 17. It says that the man of God, the man of God here does not mean a minister necessarily, even though contextually speaking Paul was writing this letter to his son in the gospel Timothy he was part of his apostolic ministry to strengthen Timothy who was in ministry actively and he was telling him that that the man of God please give it back to us that the man of God may be perfect the word perfect there means mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works so the Bible reveals to us that scripture is the basis for the maturing of the saints as powerful as miracles and signs and wonders are they do not sustain the ability to mature the saints the saints cannot be matured just by the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit the prophetic miracle signs and wonders these are consolations these are tokens of God's love representations of his power but in themselves, they do not sustain the ability to mature the saints. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible encourages believers to be grounded and established in the truth of God's word. And the strategy that was invented by the intelligence of God to help believers mature is called doctrine. Doctrine is God's way of helping believers to come into maturity doctrine comes from the latin word doctrina it means an accepted body of truth an accepted body of knowledge listen the truths that make for our excelling in the kingdom are finite there is an exact body of truth that we can lay hold of and then we will walk in experience in victory here on earth you know, the narrative that has been given in the body of Christ is that um, our pursuit for spiritual truth is infinite. It's not a very accurate theology. It is the knowledge of God pressing into the person of God that is infinite. We will continue to know him for eternity. But as far as our living on earth is concerned, our representing his purposes, the exact body of truth allocated can be known you can have that body of truth like a student who will go through a university system he can graduate he can exhaust the curriculum it does not mean he will stop learning learning continues but he can exhaust the body of truth allocated for that field of study are we together those are a set of beliefs that are accepted and are taught Sadly, the tragedy across Africa, especially, and even our nation, is that there is hardly a commendable level of spiritual maturity among believers. 
we see signs and wonders just like we witness by the grace of God and to the glory of God we are encouraged but that that steadfastness most believers the average believer is not yet established in the truth of God's Word this is where the ministry of the Word comes in the assignment of the Word of God is to help establish and mature believers why because if all we live by are miracles signs wonders as important as they are we will not be able to experience the fullness of God in our lives because a lot in the kingdom depends on growth and maturity if you're with me say amen, amen. are we together make it a culture to always come with something to write it is important it is proof of value to the Word of God that you have and so by the grace of God here we will trust God for grace as much as we experience the manifest hand of God we will focus very greatly on doctrine truths that help and mature and establish believers to the end that we become steadfast not missing in any area are we together let me give you an example of a few doctrinal truths in the Bible that are worth knowing number one truths that relate to the new birth and redemption it is important for instance that believers understand the entire scope of the work of salvation you will be amazed at how many believers and respectfully speaking even leaders in the body of Christ who cannot intelligently articulate the work of redemption it's like a doctor with no knowledge of anatomy no knowledge of physiology how did you become a doctor are we together now yeah. these are foundational truths believers have to understand what happened from the beginning they have to understand the fall of man they have to understand Jesus as perfect theology the mystery of the death the burial and the resurrection of Jesus these are foundational pillars we may differ in our levels of our approach to ministry but these are foundational pillars of the Christian faith if they are not known we cannot walk in victory truths like the identity and the authority of the believer in Christ Paul as part of his apostolic ministry took out time all through the epistles especially the book of Ephesians when you read he took out time to give a very clear exegesis of the truth of God's Word to help the believers understand their position in Christ there is a positional advantage that we have in Christ and believers must understand this if we do not understand these basic truths and then you go to deeper and weightier matters of the spirit you will find out that we become ever learning but never coming into the experience the knowledge of the truth this is the tragedy of the average believer we are not in ignorance but there is we have a deluge of spiritual truth whose relevance we cannot point in our lives we know almost every topic we know almost every great teaching but to be able to sequentially arrange them and produce constructive victory in our lives most times we do not know how to combine them the concept of sin the concept of righteousness the concept of uprightness the concept of holiness the concept of salvation the concept of the gospel these are very important I'm just running through very intelligent spiritual issues that every congregation every man of God who intends to build a people of power and grace must ensure that somewhere in their growth process these foundational truths are captured in their experiences lack of the understanding of these things will give the devil an edge over the believer are we together then the ministry of the Word of God this is a doctrinal truth that we must understand what is the value of the Word of God the average believer studies the Bible studies scripture and exposes himself to spiritual truth just to ease the guilt of not looking spiritual or to conform to a religious ritual the Bible talks about the logos of God John 1 verse 1 it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God very powerful scripture so you have to understand what the word of God is 
because the Bible tells us that man shall not live by bread alone but that he must live by every truth that proceeds from the mouth of God then the ministry of the Holy Spirit listen let me tell you there are so many believers who want to walk in the reality of the power and the glory of God many sincere preachers many in the body they want to enjoy certain levels of victory but they have not been taught constructively taught about the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit even though the Holy Spirit plays a very vital role in salvation there is a separate encounter with the person and the office of the Holy Spirit are we together then we talk about kingdom living we now begin to bring believers into the revelation of the kingdom Jesus began to talk to us about the kingdom what is the kingdom the character of the kingdom I'm showing you doctrinal truths that if ignored there is no church happening I guarantee you then kingdom concepts like faith kingdom concepts like hope like love like peace these are very powerful truths that must be taught the believer you have to understand what the peace of God is what it means to live and walk in love the power of hope the power of faith the Bible talks about faith being a shield it says wherein with it will be able to quench every fiery dart of the enemy then we now come into subjects of the realm of the spirit the reality of the satanic kingdom that has been so ignored by many people in an attempt to show the excellency of the reality of the finished work of Christ we have ignored the fact that there is a devil roaming around our horizon and the Bible tells us to not be ignorant of his devices this is where truths that deal and relate with spiritual warfare the reality of the satanic kingdom the fact that there are real demons who are out to sabotage the purposes of God in the life of the saints and that if the saints are not equipped with the requisite level of spiritual intelligence then we may not be able to walk in victory are we together then we come to the ministry of prayer prayer was such a powerful subject that the disciples came to Jesus and said teach us to pray so you don't just learn prayer by praying alone you are taught how to pray their issue was not prayerlessness their issue was inaccurate prayer there was something about the prayer of Jesus and the result that came from his prayer and they said teach us to pray then he began to teach them he says when you pray pray thus he didn't just say recite these words it's a spiritual formula Abba father when you pray pray with the acknowledgement that there is a source a sustainer a defender then he says which art in heaven that means you will need faith in your prayer because it's not in your domain you are interacting with two realms then hallowed be your name that you come to him with the spirit of reverence your kingdom come prioritize the kingdom because if the kingdom comes many things you want to ask for will no longer be needed Jesus is teaching prayer so that when you go to the place of prayer you are not just shadow boxing and dissipating spiritual energy that cannot produce results this is largely what we do just because we dissipate a lot of spiritual energy we convince ourselves that on the strength of the enormity of the energy that is dissipated we are making contact in the spirit it may not be so one man prayed and a territory was shot it was it was deprived of rain one correct prayer then we talk about the subject of kingdom advancement listen if you're a man of God here you may want to write some of these things down and build a catalog of your spiritual your mentorship system to the members this this is these are the truths that members should come to receive they are not opinions they are doctrines these are the truths the pillars upon which the maturity of the saints depend on kingdom advance if believers are not king are not taught kingdom advance we are going to live purposeless lives acquiring things that have no eternal value 
what gives credence to subjects like prosperity and the rest is kingdom subjects like prosperity health advancement success they find their correct bearing when they are, the subjects are dealt with with respect to kingdom if kingdom is not in view it is risky and dangerous even destructive to mentor people and teach them these things because all of these things are spiritual arsenals that were supposed to help the believer to become efficient to an end the end is thy kingdom come are we still together then we talk about subjects like purpose and destiny never downplay the fact that believers need to find fulfillment in their lives they will not indefinitely just be career people they will not indefinitely just be church goers for many years sooner or later they will have to confront the subject of meaning what is my life about nobody will waste his time indefinitely no matter how sincere you are as a man of god as a preacher as a spiritual platform you must be able to mentor the people to find meaning for their lives it is lack of meaning that exposes people to all kinds of violence when people do not live for a cause that is bigger than their needs they can become prey to the devil purpose and destiny very powerful it defines the coordinate for your focus it gives you discipline it helps to channel your energy constructively so you wake up in the morning justifiably so and you sleep late you sleep in the night with joy in your heart knowing that you're making constructive advancement then we have to talk about truths like the end times the reality of the afterlife is a subject that many people may not want to touch the Bible says if our hope is only in this life this world it says we are of all men most miserable to understand the gravity of that statement you have to examine how miserable men look because the bible says you have a miserable man at any level is not a good sight and then the bible says you are of all men most miserable it is true that jesus is coming back and my goodness there are all kinds of doctrinal and theological and archaeological arguments as to it believers must be able to find comfort why because in a congregation like this sincerely speaking even though it is not our intention as time progresses people will lost will lose loved ones is that true people will have to mourn loved ones either because their time is up or for some reason and there must be a doctrinal foundation that gives them strength at that point it takes more than an impulsive comfort for two three days people must derive sustainable strength on a revelation of what happens after this life it is on the strength of that you can now say like Paul for for me to live is Christ and to die is gain so if you declare long life is not out of fear it's because you need time to make kingdom come happen but if at all the flight comes you go with joy knowing that you have cheated death already is God helping us these are the doctrinal truths these are like spiritual classes schools of the spirit that you have to pass through you cannot go through these things and still be weak and be tossed to and fro the bible says it is for this that the bible says ephesians chapter 4 when you read from verse 10 to this end the bible says he gave unto some apostles and prophets evangelists pastors teachers for the maturing the equipping of the saints that the saints now being matured will do the work of the ministry to the end that will attain that stature in the spirit it says not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive stability comes through doctrine then we will not also neglect matters of life like the economic system of the kingdom look at me did you know that the kingdom of God has an economic system that must be studied there are different systems all across this cosmos but God has his economic system that means there is a kingdom provision for the welfare of the saints it is irresponsible and I submit to you with all due respect it is irresponsible for a man of God to have the privilege of 
been with a congregation for many years and not expose them to the economic system of the kingdom because these are matters of life it's not just about prayer and trusting God to come there are school fees to be paid there are real issues that pertain unto life and if believers are not taught they will have to adopt any option that is available and most of the options you would have to trade your soul in exchange so he said what shall it profit a man if you will gain these are business languages gain the world and lose your soul it says i wish above all things that you prosper and be in health there is an economic system designed for the kingdom and i will respectfully observe that the challenge with the body of christ is that most times our doctrines are inaccurately communicated that means it's it is garnished with a plethora of imbalances so on one hand we have people who teach believers for instance that all it takes to prosper is just to focus on the spiritual laws of tithing and giving and sowing and that is wonderful there is a place for that and then they ignore the fact that there are principles of value and productivity that synergize themselves together to make believers exceptional so believers continue to obey the spiritual laws the spiritual laws are responsible for the arrival of the blessings but the natural laws are they arrive they are responsible for the sustenance if you do not know this you will keep having short-lived testimonies one breakthrough and then after five years another one comes the economic system of the kingdom then of course we have to teach believers on things that relate to relationships family life we are relational beings the command be fruitful is a very serious command be fruitful there does not just mean have children be fruitful means be relational because everything multiplies through relationships your business your job your work with God and until we understand principles of relationship prophecy will keep bringing opportunities that lack of knowledge of relationships will keep canceling out of believers lives there are many people who receive prophetic words may god connect you to destiny help us may god lift you they say amen but not understanding the requisite principles for maintaining and attracting relationships they will be spiritual pray in tongues but if you do not have this as a pastor, as a man of God, you will never have sustainable membership. Because the membership are first people before your members. And there are, there, there are principles, not only spiritual principles, psychological principles that must be in place. Let me tell you, human beings are not stupid. They will not indefinitely be loyal to someone and a cause without an interplay of these truths. If you are with me, say Amen probably god is revealing to someone right now this is just an introduction whilst you've heard me speak god is telling you you see the area you have ignored the area of loophole the area of of ignorance the area of carelessness in your life becomes the access point of satan now we celebrated wonderful testimonies here from people who miraculously within a week Look, the wonder-working power of God. Now, the anointing has played its own course. It's left for them to understand the principles of relationship now to sustain that breakthrough. Is that true? So, receiving a prophetic word is not enough. You have to be equipped with truths like the law of honor to understand these principles. So, when you say a believer is matured, you don't just mean he has been around spiritual things for a long time no it means that he has actively been mentored believers must submit themselves to mentorship not the idea of mentorship we have in our world today that has become an evil and a destructive usurping of the right and the will of men I'm talking of mentorship, a system where you submit yourself to a body of spiritual truth to the end that you'll be edified and be matured. This is the assignment of doctrine. Are we blessed? To see you high and lifted up You are shining in the light of your glory 
pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Here's the prayer. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. It's a real prayer. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Hallelujah. Two men were with the resurrected Christ on the way to Emmaus. Just because they were at proximity with the word did not mean that they had an encounter. You can be close to spiritual things for many years and convince yourself that just because you are around spiritual things, you are growing. They were with Jesus and yet did not recognize him. But the Bible says when the bed was broken, their eyes opened. Can you pray whilst you are seated? Lord, open my eyes. Let this be a journey of transformation. Let this be a journey of growth. Please pray. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So for tonight, just spare me a few minutes and we're done. Listen, week in, week out, when you come, did you know why we pray that God should bring people? We don't pray for people just to celebrate a crowd. It's more than that. It's a passion to reach as many people. There are 3.2 million people, demographically speaking, in this city. If we're unable to reach at least 300,000 people with the truth of God's word to mature them, we are wasting your time and we are wasting God's time. <laughs> yes. You have to believe this. So when you are dragging someone to church, you are not trying to help a ministry grow. You are looking at him and like a doctor. You can scan through his life. While he comes to say my life, you can see the spiritual gaps. You, you know the laws he's breaking in an instant. And you know if God does not help this man, just agreeing and praying will not solve the problem. Because the truths that this person needs to learn are many. It is on the, that is what sponsors your compassion. When you draw someone to the house of God, you are already excited because more than an instant miracle, he now has the opportunity to be immersed in this spiritual truth. So he leaves that service with an enlightened understanding and he will thank you for it. While the word of God is coming, he can see the gaps in his life. There is a grace given to a man that can open the eyes of men. It's the grace that causes all men to see. So you can see your life in light of this truth. And you can say, wow, I now see why my church is not growing. It's not because I'm not from this city. I now see this may be what I may be doing wrong. And then because you are told to receive with meekness the engrafted word, you are not ashamed of God exposing your area of growth. It's like saying you are better today than you were yesterday. And you receive it with truth. Then you go back like the foxes of Samson and you will do mighty and terrible things for the kingdom this is what i seek by the spirit of god that will happen in our lives that week in let me tell you the truth i give you a guarantee if you come here week in week out and you cannot constructively measure your spiritual growth i am wasting your time please look for something important and do with your life Are we together? Many times we teach that all you need, one encounter with the word, is all you need. That's a very sincere statement, but that's incomplete. Many people have encountered the word for many years. It is the truth that is accurately taught, that you receive with understanding, and you engage appropriately, that produces for you. Not the truth available. Access to truth does not transform. No. It must be accurately taught. Then it must be understood. Then it must be received by faith. The principles contained therein applied diligently. 
then you can commit God's integrity to perform hallelujah let's talk about spiritual growth tonight let's start from there where we're, we're starting from the very foundation this is a new work and so we we'll just start and trust God for grace to build us as far as he can help us if we're together say amen first Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11 please let's rush we have to trust God for grace to be very fast tonight and then we pray first Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11 we're discussing the subject of spiritual growth please read with me if you can see it projected inside and outside ready read when I was a child uh-huh I spake as a child I understood as a child I thought as a child but when I became a man I put away childish things please keep that scripture there Paul is admonishing the church in Corinth part of his apostolic ministry and he's talking about the characteristic features that represent childishness in the kingdom that you know a child number one by how you speak you know a child number two by your level of spiritual understanding are we together you know a child by your thought process because your life is a reflection of your thoughts so we can piece this together and accurately gauge the spiritual level of a man the way that you speak your degree of comprehension and the way you think the way you process spiritual things when i was a child he said this also talks about transition when i was once upon a time he was a child this is a very powerful message because it means men can grow it's a it's a revelation i can come out of my former self into a new version of me that means the version you saw last week while you are talking about that one i have grown you are talking about the version that cannot heal the sick you are talking about the version that is ignorant and that we can evolve into superior dimensions of ourselves in this kingdom very powerful so you can see one who is weak he may even come out for salvation prayer and you watch that person and you're like wow when is this guy going to understand spiritual things just give the person the atmosphere of growth and sometimes as little as weeks under a very correct system of growth you will be surprised what will happen to that person when I was a child I spoke like a child understood as a child and I thought as a child but when I became a man what happened I pushed childish things childish speaking childish understanding childish thinking if you're with me say amen write this down please growth refers to increase in size increase in capacity increase in convictions increase in resources growth refers to increase of all kinds increase in size for instance increase in capacity increase in convictions increase in resources God expects believers to grow the Bible is full of um, admonishments for believers to grow God desires that we grow biologically God desires that we grow intellectually God desires that we grow career wise for career people God desires that we grow financially like we spoke about earlier on but for this for tonight the subject of focus is spiritual growth Luke chapter 2 and verse 52 the Bible says and Jesus grew or he increased Luke chapter 2 and verse 52 and Jesus increased the Bible says Jesus your Jesus had to grow he increased in wisdom in stature and in favor with God and with man hallelujah write this down please spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a Christian not necessarily Luke chapter 11 and verse 52 spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a Christian just because you gave your life to Jesus in 1990 or 2000 or 2010 the the passage of time does not necessarily equate spiritual growth listen to this Jesus is speaking to the scribes he says woe to you lawyers for you have taken the key of knowledge 
you've been here for a long time you have refused to enter yourself and you have stopped others from entering most times we pride ourselves just because we have memory of the day that we came out to make an altar call and you hear people say things like i have been a christian for 20 years now that's what's been uh, that's what um our applause i'm not downplaying it but i'm saying just because you gave your life to christ it's like someone who bought a car in 2000 and just because a car is in his house he tells you he's a driver no the presence of a car does not necessarily mean the ability to drive hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you